So I have on my list all these notes. Um, <laughs> and uh, <coughs> I kind of went over some of this in the validation video, but for people who want to be professional readers, and I'm speaking specifically to mediums and psychic students here, um, not only do we want to validate, but we also want to be able to communicate as clearly as possible to our clients. And in order to do that, I personally had to expand my vocabulary like big time. Um, when you're raised in a certain way, you can't even boggle the ways that people are living over in Bolivia or in Alaska or, you know, in Hawaii. I as someone who's never been to Alaska or Hawaii or Bolivia, I don't understand what the cultures are, what the set standards are. So in order to communicate about things from different cultures and different times and different languages, I had to learn a lot. And thankfully, you know, this spirit can tell me, even if someone speaks Spanish, okay, I speak a bunch of Spanish. Um, I'm not fluent. I'm almost fluent in French um, and I speak pieces of a bunch of other languages because I love languages. Um, but if someone were to hand me a chinchilla or to show me a chinchilla in spirit, you know, if I had never seen a chinchilla before, how do you explain a chinchilla as someone who hasn't had an experience with an animal like that before? Um, or even a flower, if you're not into gardening or planting flowers or picking flowers, how can you relate to that in a way to communicate to the person that does understand it, what you're trying to get across? And it's kind of a funny way to think about it, but it really is like trying to translate a completely different language like Russian that doesn't even have letters like English. Um, so I had to find a way to broaden my perception and change my language. Um, <coughs> and the way I found to do that was to talk more to spirit. Okay. Um, I don't know the difference between a regular dairy Jersey cow and a belted Galloway other than the names, but I'm pretty sure there are differences because it's two different breeds of cows. Um, so if I know that I'm going into a specific situation, for instance, I used to volunteer a lot for animal causes. Um, and a lot of times there were special events like, um, I don't know, to benefit certain breeds, uh, to benefit just specific, specific kinds of rescues. Um, and if I wasn't familiar with that, I would try to familiarize myself with you know, that entity and their cause and the things that they're passionate about, not only for myself, but also to help me in my readings. Um, so I learned about unusual dog breeds, which is really cool to me. You know, I love learning. Um, and I could communicate to the people that, you know, may have had a question about different kinds of, you know, different dogs have dog tails, different dogs have different you know, just breed specific kind of things. Um, and I learned the language, the lingo of dog lingo, you know, whatever breed lingo they use um, to help myself out when I was doing readings there. Now, a lot of times I just do card readings, but sometimes people pop through on card readings. So, you know, I can talk about that. Um, not only does that better me as a person, it also betters me as a reader. So any opportunity that I get to learn something new, I try very hard, if at all possible, to jump on those opportunities and say, yes, I'll learn whatever you teach me, you know, especially if it's free. Yay. Um, <coughs> so uh, interviewing versus interrogating. Um, talking to the dead people. Um, if there's something that you don't understand, it can be extremely frustrating um, for me to try to communicate to the client. Um, it's not a chinchilla. It's a chupacabra, you know? Um, and what are the differences between those things? Well, if I can't ask the right questions of spirit, I'm not going to get the answers that I need. 
Does that make sense? Um, for instance, if I say it's kind of a rat-like animal with a long tail, but it's super furry and very soft. It's got these weird little ears, you know. Hopefully at that point, the client will know it's a chinchilla. But if I don't know what a chinchilla is, it's hard to explain that. And because I don't work with names or like full words, um, I had to be a little more creative in the kinds of questions that I would ask. Um, so instead of concentrating on the picture, if you've already described the picture of the animal or the picture of the flower, you know, it's, um, it's a yellow flower, it's got long leaves, kind of, you know, bows out like a trumpet, you know, now that could be a lily. Um, that could be a tiger lily. That could be, you know, several different kinds of flowers. Um, and if someone doesn't take that right away, okay, well, we're going to be asking more questions. What other kind of questions can we ask respectfully without interrogating spirit and demanding answers? Because the moment we start demanding answers is the moment our connection kind of mm, frays a little bit, okay? So I know it can be frustrating and difficult for readers. Um, to try to get things across to our clients, um, but we have to interview, not interrogate, okay? Um, you know, if you have the basics, what, who, where, why, when, that's a beginning, right? Okay, what, it is an animal, what, it is a flower, okay? Where, where are these things native to? Or how the person in front of me know these things. Um, did her grandmother have a chinchilla? Does her daughter have a chinchilla? You know, does she grow these flowers? Did the relative that's coming through grow these flowers? How are these things related? Um, where, where, what, what, you know, what, we got that, where, 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 when? Okay, did she have this chinchilla as a pet, as a child? You know, how does this item relate to our client through spirit? That is what we're trying to get to. And it's all about creative question asking in a respectful manner. We don't demand, we request. Um, so I'd really like if anyone could have a question about something that they've experienced or you know, a student question or client question, um, especially about picking the symbols that you want someone to give to us. We always ask for kind of simple things. You know, a rubber ducky is a simple item. Almost everyone I know would know a yellow rubber ducky if they were to see one. It's a recognizable thing. Um, some songs, you know, I'm not really too familiar with classical music. Um, I know the basics, Beethoven, Mozart, good on that. Um, you know, there are a few I would probably recognize if I hummed. But, you know, I don't listen to a lot of country. I don't. You know, um, I'm not that familiar with gospel. So there are things that I could learn to communicate better because I've, I have people give me songs. But if I don't recognize the song, sometimes I will hum the song to the client and feel like a complete goober doing it. But if it's a meaningful song, you know, this is obviously a message or a point of validation. This is important. I can make a complete fool of myself. That's okay. <laughs> um... <coughs> So, you know, there's, there's music, there's smells. Um, a lot of times people baking, instead of seeing the item they're cooking, I will smell it. And, you know, chicken noodle soup, super recognizable. Um, apple pie, super recognizable. Chocolate chip cookies, any kind of cookie is pretty, smells like cookie. Um, but in order to get more information, I have to ask, okay, is that a cookie? Confirm, yes, that's a cookie. What kind of cookie? You know, do you get more pictures? If not, start listing off. Is it a chocolate chip cookie? Is it a holiday cookie? Is this cookie supposed to remind this person of a specific life event? Okay. Um, you know, just keep asking, but ask in a respectful manner. Don't be look, look, if you don't tell me what this cookie is, I swear to goodness, I'm booting you out for another dead person. All right. No, don't. The difference between being sassy and being disrespectful. Okay. I've had plenty of sassy dead people and you know dealing with that is enough but there's no need for you to be sassy to the dead okay mm. <coughs> so respectfully ask creative questions that is actually going to be your homework for this week 
how do you ask creative questions to get the best information to validate the fastest, okay? Because validation is normally where we get tripped up in our questions. The messages are almost always easy. They love you, they're safe, they're feeling better, they feel great, they love you, they're watching you, they're sending you messages, you know they're leaving you little gifts. But the validation, we have to validate that it's your person, who it is, and then we get to the message. But interview, don't interrogate. Maybe you can find your own list of top five questions. Um, probably, I probably need to make a list of top five questions. That would be my homework for the week. Um, top five questions to ask your dead people, okay? Not the basics, male, female, where are you in the family hierarchy, how did you die? What are your five creative questions to help connect the dead to connect with your living, okay? Um, also, if you're talking to your spirit guides, what do you think are five good questions to ask when you're trying to learn or confirm something? Fun homework. Yay. All right. Love you guys. Have a great day.